entering the ring wearing white trunks, hailing from and representing his home of Atlanta, Georgia. He weighed in at 220 pounds. His record stands at 38 wins, five losses, two draws, with 25 wins coming by way of knockout. Having held the heavyweight title and unequaled four times, he is known as one of boxing's great warriors. Currently ranked the number two IBF contender, here is the former undisputed cruiserweight world champion and the former four-time heavyweight champion of the world, introducing the one and only Evander, the real deal, Holyfield wearing blue trunks, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada by way of Flint, Michigan. He weighed in at a ready 214 pounds with a record of 34 wins and two losses. He has 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former WBO heavyweight world champion, the current IBF number one ranked heavyweight. Here is the classy top contender, introducing Chris Bird. Okay, gentlemen, you're both familiar with the rules. We've gone over them. I want you to remember two things. Obey my commands. Most importantly, defend yourselves at all times. Now shake hands and come out of the bell. Crowd rising in energy as Randy Newman prepares to summon the fighters to the center of the ring, and here they come. If you haven't seen Bird before, instantly see the Southpaw dance. Holyfield has had three previous fights against Southpaws in his professional career. Two of them, of course, in the heavyweight division against Michael Moore. Won one, lost one. Bird, an entirely different kind of fighter than Moore, though. Not a power puncher like the former heavyweight champ who was knocked out by George Foreman. Meanwhile, Bird starts out moving in exactly the opposite direction, rotating from left to right, and slams Holyfield with a straight left hand. That's good. Holyfield's got to get busy. You got to make certain this guy's elbows are never out, overextended. Keep those elbows sharp. Taps you close. Bird lands a straight left hand. Holyfield lands a left hook on Bird against the ropes. Evander, for his part, says, I must focus on the body. When you miss against Bird, you tend to miss upstairs. And it wears you out when you miss big shots against him. My idea, says Evander, go to his body and just try to keep my hands on him. But he's going upstairs and missing. Make certain that those are not backhands with that right jab that Bird is throwing. Backhand well, it's a fine back. line. It's a fine line because he lays it out there more or less with the hand open, and Bird is such a soft puncher. I mean, he's he's really trying most of the time simply to make some impact. But he's throwing more hard punches. Holyfield got in his best punch to the body so far, a left hook to the rib cage under Bird's right elbow. And that's the to Holyfield's best punch, if you ask me. That left hook to the body. Totally agree. Holyfield trying to make the counter puncher come to him. Hard right hand by Holyfield. Drives Bird to the ropes. Bird ducks another punch as the round comes to a close. Holyfield lands a right at, toward the end of the round. You wonder if that will influence the scoring of that round. Very difficult rounds to score. Brother Patrick also plays a role in there. Mother Rose, Father Joe, fixtures in the bird corner. CompuBox numbers in round one. Holyfield only six of 29 by CompuBox estimate. Bird 13 out of 47. Yet Harold Letterman, perhaps influenced by that sharp right hand toward the end, elected to give the round to Evander. I gave it to Bird. Holyfield still trying to determine exactly what he wants to do against Bird. He's trying to make him come forward. Yeah, that's make interesting, isn't it? Shot. And here comes Holyfield lashing out and hitting Bird with a right hand to the check. Yeah, elaborate on this, George, because yeah, it looks as though he's trying to, to lull the counterpunch. Counterpunchers love to make you miss first, and then they hit you with something. That's what you got to do is make them throw something, then start countering on them occasionally, and you make them give it up. 
So Holyfield is purposely staying back and trying to lure Bird to him. Right, counter punches love to duck. The best one will tell you, I'll do it. Let me duck first. A good straight left by Bird that time. If you hold the field, you don't want him to get that kind of courage to just stand there and just don't do anything. You got to touch him. If nothing else. Holyfield short with the winging right. Bird still just popping the jab, popping the jab, little straight left hand, just trying to get his hands onto Evander and yeah. score. Bird's corner told him, look, keep stay in the middle of the ring. He can't get you out there. And Holyfield needs that close to the ropes to land two shots to Bird. Misses him if he's out in the middle, but if he's close to the rope, he's gonna land that one-two combination. And that was a rope, and he didn't do anything. A lot of distance between Bird and Evander fighting this way. At some point, does Holyfield have to get closer, George? He's got to keep the fight close at all times. Bird does not like close fighting. Yeah, but the thing is, Holyfield's trying to fight not his fight. This is not the kind of fight that Evander Holyfield has ever fought before, as long as I can remember, of trying to, to go on a defensive and lure the other fighter into him consistently. Well, he's always been in with the bigger guys who's attacking him anyway. So it's pretty much what he likes for you to come after him. He'll beat you up. He just doesn't go after people as well. Love for you to try him. I mean, this is a very big round for Bird. Yes, in the second round, Holyfield has looked too passive, too hesitant, and Bird right, has been able to score. Over. So just as I say that the rounds would be difficult to score, you get an open and shut case. But this fight could change several times, it seems to me, as Holyfield explores tactics against Bird. Bird is no longer throwing the kind of little pity pat feather duster punches he used to. He may not be throwing big heavy punches, but he's throwing sharp punches. Now Holyfield is starting to get a little more activity going. Looks like he wants to go to war a little bit, George. Yeah, you just can't land the hard shots. Just settle for the mid-range shots just to make certain that you touch this guy. One, two, three, four, five. Let the rough say break. Evander. Two right hands upstairs, two digging left hooks to the body. Another digging left hook to the body. Now, Van is fighting the right kind of fight, but you don't want to be throwing too much energy away with the power. He's fighting them the correct way, but too much energy in those shots. That you got to step back and breathe once you do that. It was interesting on the ropes how Bird held his gloves up around his head to avoid Holyfield's head. I think he was trying to avoid Holyfield's punches. Well, maybe that maybe too. Both. Hey, maybe both, guys. You know, it, it, it makes sense. Bird himself said that he didn't want to focus in any way, shape, or form on the question of whether Holyfield butts. He'll leave that to the referee and just try to box it. Holyfield does for the Lawton Bird to box, relax when he wants. He just can't do that. And there's the first headbutt of the fight. There's a fight. Let's go. Against the rope, you gotta hit him. You just gotta hit him. Is this the kind of fight that Evander Holyfield was worried about when he said he didn't want to fight a guy with this style, George? Yeah, because this guy lifts his right hand up every now and then, doesn't do anything, keeps you ducking and dodging, and he makes you look foolish once you decide I'm going to hit him. Good right to the punch belly. By Bird. Outstanding left to the belly, right in the right in the center of the gut. Now Holyfield decided that whenever Bird throws his his right, Holyfield has got to throw his right. You just can't wait and, and try to jab with him. Make it a dance. There's the first clash of heads as Holyfield comes in aggressively trying to get into the chest of Bird. And there's that straight left body punch by Bird. And you heard the conversation between Chris Bird and his dad about Evander Holyfield's head. 
Harold, how do you have the first three? <laughs> okay, Jim. 29-28, two rounds to one, Chris Bird. Jim, let me tell you something about scoring this fight. You know, basically speaking, I always say that the most important factor in judging a round is clean, effective punching. When you're judging a Van der Holyfield fight, basically what you're trying to figure out is who's doing more damage. In round one, when a Van der Linde does big shots at the end of the round, he did more damage in the round. But two and three clearly bird rounds. One other thing about the rules, you're not allowed to spin a guy. If you spin a guy and you hit him, then the referee should take away a point. Holyfield getting in another digging left hook to the body and getting Bird's attention with that right hand body shot as well. Bird is real good at spinning, but he's not one of these foul guys. After he spins, he never tries to hit you. That's good about it. Chris Bird is. He certainly got the personality and the temperament of a great sportsman. There's no bigger fan of boxing among all boxers in the world than Chris Bird, as was evidenced partially by the fact that he was there at ringside last Saturday night to watch Vladimir Klitschko and Jamil McLean one week removed from coming here to fight Evander Holyfield. He's just a fan who can't resist the sport. That's why he's learned how to operate with that style he has. It's awkward. He knows it's awkward. When you get a guy who stands back and waits for you, you can beat him all night. And that's what Evander Holyfield is doing wrong tonight, standing back waiting. Well, the story's been told many times of how Bird and his brothers were trained to box in an 11 foot by 14 foot basement room. Now Evander's picked up his right hand lead. There it goes. Got to bring that right foot a little closer to your left and start leading with the right hand. Interesting shift in momentum here. Holyfield getting Bird's attention with body punches. Vander's corners better tell him after those break rough tell you to break you got to be the first one to get back on the guy Don't let him be the first one Hard left hand from bird hard right hand from Holyfield Now bird popping the jab right onto a Vander's chin very accurate punching there by Chris bird and stiff jabs Holyfield finding that to hit bird in the head is like trying to catch a butterfly with tweezers it's very, very hard. Well, very last easy if you take the power off the shot. Stop trying to hit him with a big shot. And Got Holyfield him. gets in four shots to punctuate the round after Bird had spent the previous minute beating Evander to the punch. Tracy Bird, wife of Chris, mother of three, looking on from ringside, like her husband, huge fan of the sport. There's one of the Bird progeny. Only one old enough to come to the fights. Looks worried. Four tactical rounds in the books. All of them interesting. Ebb and flow, shifting tides of fortune. Evander Holyfield with a 12 to 8 CompuBox edge in Power Connects in that last round. Several of those connects within the last 10 seconds of the round. That referee is staying right out of the way. I like those kind of referees. Let the fighters make the shot. Well, it's Randy Newman, a former heavyweight himself. You Chris Bird is backing Evander Holyfield up. What is that? Well, it's not a backup. He's going in a circle, as you see. Okay. A circle. The old square circle, is it? But he's not getting away from Bird's jab, which Bird is just sticking into his face over and over and over. Because it's kind of a backhand punch there. Yep. I guess the ref just doesn't want to get into it now, but at some point or another, you ain't going to check him with that back hand. Holyfield is just looking for one hard shot. That's the way you don't want to fight these counter punches, looking for one shot. Got to throw five of them. Tap, 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 tap. Got him on the corner. Right hand grazed Bird. That one also a glancing blow. The body shots are landing. Now he gets a right hand in upstairs. Left hand to the body was a solid blow. Right hand on the top of the head. Bird decides to throw back. Holyfield laying in and attacking. Now he lets him be the first one back. That's the mistake Holyfield keeps making. He allows Bird to be the first one back after these exchanges. He's got to be first. Takes energy to do that. Yeah, but you just got to suck it up and get some energy here. Holyfield 
comes forward with his head and catches Bird on the point of the chin with the top of his head after Bird had landed two or three straight punches. Bird popping and popping. Holyfield had the one big rally, but the rest of the round was Chris Bird sticking the jab. Put the water in the Deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. All you gotta do is take charge. Be first, be first. A little water, just a little bit. Okay, no water. Here, Holyfield has a moment on the ropes, trying to bully Bird. How effective is he? It's almost like trying to pick up a wet bar of soap in the shower because he is just so slippery. Box numbers in round five, Bird 19 out of 57, Holyfield 11 out of only 27. The heavyweight average for punches thrown in a round is 47. Holyfield hasn't gotten there yet or anywhere near it in any of these rounds as he hunts and becks and looks for opportunities against Chris Bird. We mentioned Bird's only two losses. He himself says he made a mistake against Ikebia Bucci and got caught with a punch that he shouldn't but he says that Vladimir Klitschko noticeably shortened up his punches for the purpose of just connecting with Bird, and he said that was a good strategy on Vladimir's part. Yeah, well, a lot of people were down on Vladimir Klitschko uh, last week because of that disappointing fight against an opponent who didn't come to fight. But just imagine that he took 11 out of 12 rounds from Bird and knocked him down twice and just beat him up badly. Sticking the jab, sticking the jab, straight left hand, beating Holyfield to the punch, over and over. Holyfield waiting again. Holyfield lands a right upstairs as Bird was whacking him with a left hook, or a left cross, I should say, to the head. Holyfield's corner told him to be first, get back and be first. That's the first time he's done it. Fighting against the south ball, Holyfield goes straight right hand, straight right hand, straight right hand. You can't miss it. Bird goes straight left hand and shows that the opposite is true as well. Through half this fight, Bird has made the Vander Holyfield look about 50. Halfway through 12 round fight. In the sixth round, Holyfield, by CompuBox estimate, threw 18 punches, and Bird threw 61, landing 12 of 49 jabs. Harold, how do you have it through six? <laughs> okay, Jim, five rounds to one, 59, 55, Chris Bird. Jim, I just think he's jabbing him to death with that right jab, but I gotta tell you something about the rules. George Foreman said something very interesting. You're not allowed to open the boxing glove, just like George told you. You gotta keep it closed. Now, at times, when Bird, leads, when Bird throws that right jab, he, he opens the glove. Now, Randy Newman should warn him about that. If he keeps opening the glove, you take away your point. Under the rules, you must Let's keep the right, the uh, glove closed. Well, when it, when it lands on Foreman's head, the glove closes. You mean on Holyfield's head? On Holyfield's head. And if he comes Sorry, over, George. If 50, he comes 50, over 50. and punches Foreman, it'll probably close there. Too. Right, step back. Let me have the swap. <laughs> Does this remind you just a little bit of Jimmy Young and you, George? I hate to bring it up. <laughs> but Jimmy Young was a right-handed version of Chris Berg. I think Chris Berg is in a league of his own. That fight, George Foreman against Jimmy Young, was March 17, 1977 in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Memorable night. Launched George Foreman into the next incarnation of his ex existence, which was out of boxing for 10 years, and then he came back. What a story. Beat the devil out of him. <laughs> Vander is allowing this guy to just relax and do whatever he wants. Trying to counter punch or counter punch it. You well, just can't of, do it. One of the discussions before the fight was reflexes. You have to have great reflexes to fight a quick counter puncher like Bird, and does Evander still have that? No, you can't fight him with reflexes. You gotta fight him with momentum. You gotta get your chest right right there on this on your head right there on his chest, keep it there all night and throw some kind of punches. Why is he not doing it? I don't understand. What kind of training has he had? No, I don't think that's it at all. I just think 
Evander can fight the big heavyweights because they don't move a lot. He can find a strategy against this this guy. He just looks old. Just isn't there. You know, in a way, it's a it's a heavyweight version of the lightweight fight we saw last week between Mayweather and Castillo. Um, but it's more interesting because of the the great personality and great fighter that Evander Holyfield is in America. And you're saying that just as Mayweather was too quick and slick for Castillo, therefore Bird is too quick and slick for Holyfield. And he's throwing, he's even throwing harder punches than Mayweather did last week. International feed for uh, Don King overseas being announced by veteran blow-by-blow -blow announcer Bob Sheridan, also called the Colonel, and one Lennox Lewis, who uh, accepted $1 million from Don King as step-aside money not to fight Bird, along with a Range Rover, and uh, as part of that deal is participating in, in honoring and being a part of the public presentation of the two fights that King has paired together, this and Jones Ruiz. We'll try to talk to Lennox later. Round eight begins with more bird popping at Holyfield from long distance. And we heard Don Turner, Holyfield's trainer, saying, you got to get close. You got to have heart. And that's what he's losing now. Gone to his corner twice and hasn't sit down on the, on the stool. Generally, when a fighter starts off sitting down on the stool and doesn't go back, something is wrong. He's discouraged. He looks like a lot of guys have looked in the late rounds after having been flummoxed by Chris Bird. And now Bird is starting to smile and laugh. Vanders turned softball. And that's what that's what Bird was smiling and laughing about, obviously. He's looking for better punching angles. He told us that he would hope that he could get Bird to square up shoulder to shoulder against him. That's only happened two or three times. If only Chris Bird could punch, he could end this fight. For all we know, George, the fight may be over. What a feather it would be in Bird's cap if if a guy regarded as a non-puncher knocked out of Andrew Holyfield, who's regarded as having one of the greatest chins ever. And that's the way you fight these guys. Don't throw big punches, just win every round. That's what Evander should have been doing with Chris Bird all, Bird all along. Stop trying to win the guy, knock him out, win round. Bird, from time to time, embarrassing Holyfield with his greater quickness in there. Has that backhand with that straight backhand again. I mean, yep. slap backhand. As I did. said, he's going to get away with that. Randy Newman is not going to stop that. You see how easy it is to hit him on a shot? A bird to get tagged when you don't throw power. Well, and if you go to the body instead of to the head, too. I don't think it's easy at all. Because if, if it would be easy, Evander would have found out a way to do it by well, now. He just does not believe in throwing a little shot, Larry. He lands a right uppercut as Bird gets brave and comes in. This is uh, Chris Bird's version of a bird in hand. And the bird in hand for him is Evander Holyfield. Well, if it were a jabbing contest, they'd stop it. In the eighth round, Holyfield landed one of 11 jabs by CompuBox estimate. Bird, 18 out of 50. And you saw the numbers that showed that Holyfield, by CompuBox estimate, has landed only three jabs in the whole fight. Of course, it's hard to do it against Southpaws. It's particularly hard to do it against this one. That bird is as foxy as they get. Got his eyes wide open. Hard right hand by Holyfield. Bird takes the shot pretty well. I mean, you, you, you got to be hoping you can turn it around with one punch against him, and if he takes a punch well, how are you going to do that? Holyfield just starts to get a little rhythm where he bobs to the, moves to his left and throws his hook, moves to his right, throws his right hand. Bird jabs him right to the chest, too. Those punches hurt, takes your power away from your jab, does everything you don't want to have done to you. gets him squared up. Lands one right hand. Might have been partially blocked by Bird's glove. Hard left hand shot to the body. 
Bird goes into that peekaboo act. Holyfield is just trying to get in one desperate shot. That's all. No longer trying to win. One desperate. When you get desperate like that, that's when you get hurt. I asked Evander if during their early days with main events he ever got into the ring with Pernell Whitaker. He said no, he never actually tried to spar with Whitaker. That would have been too frustrating for him. He may feel after tonight as though he's been in the ring with Pernell Whitaker. <laughs> that's right. Weighing in a little heavier. Though. Look at Bird laughing and smiling at us as he pops Evander at the same time. Evander just trying to rip everything he can with those left hooks. Crowd starting to warm the bird a little bit. This guy's been allowed to rest all he wants. Chris Bird said it would be an easy fight. So far it is. CompuBox estimate in round nine. Bird threw 52 jabs and landed 14. 70 total punches in the round. Evander Holyfield throwing a total of 27 punches according to CompuBox and landing eight. These numbers are mind-numbingly one-sided at this point. Harold, how about your scorecard? Okay, Jim, eight rounds to one, 89-82, Chris Bird just jabbing him to death with that right hand. I wonder if the official scorecards won't be closer. You see Bird is doing this, is jabbing this guy to his chest and in the side of his arms. So even, even his jab will not be effective anymore. He's taking everything away from Evander Holyfield. Power, discouraged him, and everything. Well, we've often talked about this, George. It, I mean, it would appear the boxing match has been decided. So it would be up to Holyfield at this point to get in there and try to make it a fight. I don't think he can do anything. He's allowed this guy to jab him in the chest area too much. He's not, he doesn't have that power anymore. This guy's just sucked it away from him like a syringe. If he'd only been just throwing head shots, it'd been a different story. Holyfield trying to sledgehammer Bird with body shots. Hit him low. Let's get him up. And Randy Newman says you hit him low. Hey, watching what you're watching here, George, do you suspect Lennox Lewis didn't want to fight Bird solely because he thought the public wasn't interested in the fight? Or do you suspect he wanted to stay away from that style? Yeah, well, it's been the whole history of boxing. You stay away from southpaws, stay away from southpaws who can box. This is something odd to have one of these guys in a title position like that. The other side of it is that if Chris Bird goes on to win this fight in what could be a virtual shutout, he then becomes a more important potential opponent for Lewis. The big guys are the ones who have given Bird the trouble. He was behind seven rounds to two to Vitaly Klitschko when he uh, retired with a shoulder injury. He lost 11 out of 12 rounds to Vladimir Klitschko. And Ibeabuchi, who scored a KO over him, was 240 pounds plus himself. Right hand grazes Bird. Holyfield digs the left hook to the body. His very best punches have been his left hook to the body, and that follows the book. It's been Evander's best punch his whole career. Bird just knocking him back with straight punches again. Evander trying to counter with one big shot. got hurt that time. Now, Vander Holyfield isn't laughing. That may have been his most effective round that lasted that round. He yeah, if you were bird. looking for a round, if you were judging, you were looking for a round to give to Holyfield, that would have been the one, because he landed some crunching punches toward the end of the round. Copy box numbers through 10. Holyfield 72 out of 250, 29%. Bird 192 out of 589, 33%. More than doubling Holyfield's punch output. That's the big number there. Holyfield gets rough with this guy, start throwing those hard shots. Better do it now. He can be rough. Well, six minutes to go. Whatever Evander's got, I'm sure his corner has asked him for it. 
Holyfield gets Bird cornered, catches him with the right hand. Trying to detonate Chris Bird. The way a big puncher like Ibanabuchi did when he caught him on the ropes in Tacoma. Bird's got to step up and fight this man. Don't run him away anymore. That's what he's Back doing. Back him up. Back him up. That's what he's doing right here. Bird's trying to make a retaliatory statement at this moment. And I think if he just put together some hard shots, he'll be happy about this round. Just put some power on him. Make him respect you. If he doesn't respect you, make him respect you. Right, 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 right. Combination. Right, 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 right. It was Bird who initiated that hug. I know you're rooting for Vander, George, but he's a no hooper right, right now. Back, Vander. I mean, I want you want to see Holyfield do his best and do better. I want the fans to see the best. We all do. We all do, but it doesn't look like anything is there. Yeah, he's he got him a few shots. You he's have fine. to bleed. You're gonna have to catch some shots, but there's a hard right hand by Holyfield. Never Field. open a box of mess. Never open. Andy catches Bird with a left hook. And once again, Bird is rocked by the impact of these punches as he was at the end of the last round. And he tries to turn around and retaliate. Andy Bander catches him with another big shot. Chris Bird got caught with three huge shots in the last 15 seconds of that round. And now we'll see if Holyfield can capitalize on that in the 12th. My guess, it's his last hurrah. There he is, tired, desperate, almost on his last legs. Still Evander Holyfield. He's not going to leave anything outside the ring. He's going to put it all out right in here. Holyfield managed to throw 48 punches in the 11th round. That's his biggest output of the entire fight. Bird through 81. Harold, how do you have it through 11? I'm pitching 107, 102, eight rounds to three. Chris Bird. Jim, I thought Evander did enough to pull out rounds 10 and 11. Maybe I was being a little bit generous, but certainly Evander wins with rounds 1, 10, and 11 on my card. Chris Bird, all the others. Chris Bird, basically, because of the fact that he gets off first, like you see here, clean, effective punching. That's not an easy task. This guy moves. Bird even think moving. After the last two rounds, though, Bird finally knows he's been in against Evander Holyfield. Prior to that, he might have had some questions. Just step in there with a straight left and get a knockdown. So I'm in the heavyweight pitch. Lennox Lewis couldn't knock Evander Holyfield down. It'd be shocking if Chris Bird could. Bird seems for the moment to have stemmed the tide of the Holyfield rally in rounds 10 and 11. He's gone back to Evander to the punch and fighting men in the center of the ring. Yeah, it takes a lot of energy to do what Evander is doing. He's throwing a lot of hard shots. I mean, it takes energy. He's even connecting with that left hook to the body on the southpaw. There it's were times in the in fight when Evander it. seemed to be trying to conserve his energy. He's let it hang out a lot more in the last couple of rounds. The now, bro, now, bro, come on. now it's time to see the fight. Holyfield was one of the last active fighters to actually participate in a 15-round fight early in his career against Dwight Muhammad Kawi. Maybe if he had three more rounds tonight, but he doesn't.
He didn't end the fight running away, Bird did. He ended the fight fighting. That means nine rounds to three in favor of Bird. So Harold gave Holyfield the first, the tenth, and the eleventh, and all the remaining rounds to Bird. Now you've heard George Foreman and Larry Merchant, and I'll chime in with them, saying none of us will be surprised if the official scorecards are something considerably closer than Harold Letterman's 117-111. That in the entertainment business is what we call a tease. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, John Stewart scores about 116 to 112. Judges Eugene Grant and Steve Weisfeld both score about 117 to 111. All three in favor of the winner of the IBF Heavyweight Championship of the World, Chris Burr.